kingdom is split in half, men on one side, women on the other. Nearly all of the women are wearing the full Muslim veil, while the men sport beards. This class is on the subject of marriage, and Chowdhury, a judge in some of the UK's 85 Sharia courts, reminds students of the strict rules about weddings. Remember, music and origin is prohibited in Islam, but uh, if the music does not involve wind instruments or string instruments, it does not involve anything kufr or shirk, it is not promoting any non-Islamic way of life, and it's not man live singing to woman or woman live singing to man, then it's, it's a different question. We do believe that one day France will be under the Sharia, Britain will be under the Sharia. In fact, the whole world will be under the authority of the Muslims implementing the Islamic law and order. Speaking to some of the students after class, it becomes clear that they're parroting their tutor word for word, particularly when it comes to the EDL. Makru is disliked. You see, the British way of life that they're trying to protect, what is that? Fornication, adultery, um, you know, teenage pregnancies, uh, abortions. These are things that you know, are quite harmful to people and to society. Even homosexuality is being taught to little children in schools. As a trained lawyer, Chowdhury knows exactly how far he can go before he crosses the boundary of what's legal in the UK. Well, I think Al-Qaeda is no longer just um, <clears throat> an organization. Al-Qaeda is a phenomenon of resistance against occupation and of calling for the Sharia, you know. And you can see nowadays that if you call for the Sharia, people call you Al-Qaeda. They call me the voice of Al-Qaeda in Europe. And yet I, never, I don't have any administrative link with Sheikh Osama bin Laden. You know, I'm not part of the structure. But I think that that, has, that is what it's become. So if Al-Qaeda means you're calling for the Sharia and you, you want uh, uh, people to liberate your land, and you want to protect the life, honor, and property of the Muslims, then I'm Al-Qaeda. In reality, his organization is a minority group with just a few hundred members, but their message is enough to provoke anger amongst the public. The authorities are monitoring the Islam for UK website, but are yet to shut it down. Shahid Malik, the Muslim MP whose speech was booed at the EDL demo in Leeds, is in charge of keeping an eye on Chowdhury and the EDL. Islam for the UK is being pushed onto the margins by mainstream Muslims. I believe the EDL, as people start to understand what they're all about, are being pushed to the margins by white Britons. And it would be lovely just to put the EDL and Islam for the UK in a room somewhere and let them deal with themselves and let mainstream society get on with our lives. Back in Luton, where the EDL was first born, the large Muslim community remains under pressure. This Islamic centre was attacked with a firebomb back in May. The police haven't found the perpetrators, but released these CCTV images showing the moment of explosion. The chairman of the centre, however, believes he knows who was responsible. We're pretty sure it was, it was a far-right extremist uh, were, were, were um, responsible for that, though the police have come back to us saying that they were unable to verify this. Um, but we have feelings on the grounds ourselves and information that's come back to us, it's the far right. As for the moderate Muslims in Luton, while they're concerned by the EDL, they're more worried about Islamist extremists, such as those spreading the message of Islam for UK. It's the responsibility of Islam to stop these groups who are creating problems. The responsibility of the Muslim community. They should stop them and educate them. But this group does not want to stop. They are working under the name of Islam for their goals to defame and destroy both Muslims and Islam. In a Muslim country, these extremists would be executed by the government. Though they're both extremist and minority groups, both the EDL and Islam for UK are managing to stir up racial hatred in Britain. But it's these people, moderate Muslims who live peacefully, who are being caught in the crossfire between the two. I'm joined now in the studio here by reporter Kate Williams. Kate, how important are these movements really? Are they just on the fringes of society or are they really indicative of some greater sentiment within the UK? Well, in terms of the EDL, from what I've seen of them, I would say they are still a fringe movement. 
Uh, they've, uh, they claim to have gained thousands of members across, uh, over the last few months, and they hope to have even more members marching with them in the coming months. However, there's, there's a difficulty there. People don't realise that the EDL is not the same thing as the British National Party, uh, the extreme right in the UK. So while there might be gaining some prominence, people aren't necessarily joining the English Defence League. So they are remaining very much uh, a fringe, a minority group in the United Kingdom. Now, when it comes uh, to Anjum Chowdhury's movement, uh, he said some pretty incendiary stuff in the piece. For example, he lines himself up with, with Al-Qaeda. Do you think he really believes his own rhetoric? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, from what I saw of uh, Anjum Chowdhury while we were filming, uh, it's my belief that he is something of a self-publicist. Uh, I, I would find it hard to believe that uh, he, he's from the UK himself and I, I don't think he can really believe that British girls that you see out on a Saturday night uh, are going to start covering themselves up with burqas. I don't believe that the British people would accept uh, Buckingham Palace being turned into a mosque. However, what's worrying is that his students, as we've seen in the reports, were copying him, repeating him word for word. And it became clear that whatever he might say, whatever he might believe, the students really do believe what he's saying. They really do want to see the Sharia in the UK. And they said it's not just about uh, the, the penal system, it's not just about the, the punishments that Sharia is so well known for. It's also an economic system. It's also a cultural system. And they really do believe that that could be imposed in the United Kingdom. Let's get back to the anti-Sharia contingent. Uh, you were mentioning before this, this uh, confusion sometimes between the British National Party and the EDL. Uh, people often think that they are the same thing, but that's not at all the case. That's correct. People are very, very confused between the two. Almost everybody we spoke to believed that the BNP and the EDL are one and the same thing, but that is not the case. Uh, they both prescribe the other. The BNP said, as, I say, as you can see in the report, for their members it's a disciplinary offence for them to be associated with the English Defence League. But for the English Defence League, it's a problem in that they can't stop the people at their protest from voting BNP. So it, it's interesting, the BNP have had a, a wave of publicity in the last few months, uh, culminating in their leader, Nick Griffin, being invited onto a prime time television debate. So I think the EDL is riding this wave of publicity. They're not the same thing, but they, they do share some of the same ideas. There is some crossover in that the BNP is anti-immigration, anti-Islam. EDL is anti-extreme Islam. So that's where the confusion has arisen. Kate, just very briefly, there's already been controversy in the UK about the introduction of Sharia law. Last year, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury called it unavoidable. Well, he said aspects of it being introduced in the UK were unavoidable. That again caused another massive controversy. So this is something that's been going on for a while about Sharia law in the UK. But the Archbishop of Canterbury's argument was that there are some Jewish Orthodox courts running at the moment, so why not Sharia law? There's 85 that we know of, there could be more. And they essentially stop Muslims from having to choose between state law and their cultural law. That's all he was saying, but it did cause a huge controversy at the time. Thank you so much for coming in to talk to us about your piece. And thank you for watching, reporters. We'll see you again next week for another great story from one of the dozens of France 24 journalists around the world.